What is up YouTube? Thank you everyone for tuning in. I was going through editing the video today and I realized that I didn't actually film an intro, so I just want to say hey. Uh, if you didn't see the last video, we just threw a muffler on the bug. It sounds awesome. So I'll put a link to the video right here. And let's hop right into today's video. All right, so another thing we need to focus on on the bug is actually our wiring for our idle air control valve. Uh, so it's working, uh, I should say it's working reliably, uh, but I actually wired the coils for the stepper motor in the I idle air control valve backwards. So essentially our open settings are closing and our closing settings are open, opening. And this works fine for the most part. The only thing that doesn't work is our crank to idle taper. So we have different settings for cranking and for idling for our IAC. And in the Mega Squirt, you can actually set a time where it will taper between those two charts, essentially. Uh, and when you have it wired backwards, that's really the only downside is the crank to idle. Uh, that taper doesn't work. It just immediately goes to your idle setting. So I'm going to flip my wiring, which will require me to update my table for the IAC because the settings will actually be inverted. So now uh, lower settings will be closed and higher settings will be open, whereas before I had higher numbers being open. Sorry, higher numbers being closed and lower numbers being open. Uh, so it will take a little bit of tuning with the table, but it shouldn't take very long. And the main thing is our crank to idle will work in the end. So we'll go ahead and get into that right now and it shouldn't take too much work. We'll literally be swapping, swapping two pairs of wires, uh, which we have right back here at our connector. So this really been, shouldn't be too bad. So I'll flip those out and then we'll see if our crank to idle uh, taper starts working for us. All right, so we put both pairs of wires and it seemed to function the exact same way. So I went back and now I actually only flipped one of the two pairs of wires and it appears to be actually working properly now as far as inverted. So lower numbers mean lower idle, higher numbers mean higher idle, which essentially means now we can use our crank to idle taper. Uh, so we're gonna check it out just to make sure that that's working appropriately. And then we'll hone in on a right idle speed once we know that we're actually uh, in, heading in the right direction. The other thing we did here is we actually took one of the tunes from online. Our, uh, they have a WRX plug and play tune. Uh, so I essentially just copied over the AFR map and the ignition map and some of the accelerate, acceleration enrichment information. Uh, so hopefully that'll help us get a little bit closer to a good tune here because I'm doing my best figuring out on my own. But once I realized I could steal that plug and play, well, not really steal it, but uh, you know, download that plug and play tune. Uh, then I was able to actually make it uh, kind of customize it for my setup here. So hopefully we'll get a little bit more of that uh, smoother idle, a little bit of smoother, smoother acceleration enrichment, and, and at least a better starting point to build off uh, a really good tune for this car. So we'll go ahead. We're going to try our new idle, uh, idle air, uh, our idle air control valve. What the hell is it called? Well, in any case, we're going to go ahead and start this up and see if we have the right IAC settings for our car. And then again, we can always uh, kind of tailor them in once we know everything's working right. So if everything's working right, we should hear our idle taper down after five seconds.
perfect. We just had enough difference there to really tell, but uh, that taper was definitely working and smaller numbers were definitely giving us a higher idle. So that's perfect. I mean, sorry, smaller numbers were giving us a lower idle. So that's exactly what we were looking for. Now we'll just kind of hone it in and get our tune right. All right, we updated the settings once more here. So we'll see how that idle with taper works out or what is the term? Let me make sure I'm saying this right. Our crank to run taper. So we'll check that out now. So I think we're getting a lot closer with the settings now. We're pr I'd like to say we're pretty close to an OEM like startup and idle. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll start it up once more. Uh, take it for a spin around the neighborhood just to give it a chance to auto-tune a little bit. Use that uh, VE auto-tune live because I updated my map to use the AFR and actually I use the VE table generator. So I have a whole new VE table. It's actually pretty close to where I was originally. Uh, well, I should say where I was after a lot of auto tuning uh, now based on that WRX plug and play map. So I'm going to take it for a spin and just kind of see how things settle in. Uh, I don't think I'm going to bother filming just because I'm not really going to do anything too crazy. Uh, but then after that, we'll bring it back and I'm actually going to clean up the garage because our parts came in for the, for the Triumph and I want to dive into that. So back from our drive, everything actually went really good. The tune seems great. Uh, the only thing that appears to be uh, pretty bad is I found coolant splashed everywhere on the inside here. And if we look very closely here, our line to our overflow, this is like a high pressure line here. It has ruptured and I think it's because the line used wasn't made for high pressure. So I'm going to change this out with fuel line uh, actually, which is pretty much an upgrade all around. So I'll put fuel line there instead, and that should be fine. Uh, but this does mean I'll need to re-burp the whole cooling system, which kind of sucks, uh, but not a huge deal. And we do need to clean the back, I mean, sorry, the trunk here and everything out now that it has coolant in it. Uh, but other than that, everything went pretty smooth. We'll just get the coolant system, uh, we'll get that hose replaced, we'll get the coolant system re-bled, uh, and then we'll kind of reevaluate how the tune's looking. But I think we're going in the right direction. 
All right, so we got our blown coolant line here replaced with fuel line. So really all we gotta do now is we'll use our no spill funnel. And I actually love this. I just had a little hard time sealing it up earlier, but we got that all sealed. Uh, so we'll use our no fill funnel or no spill funnel uh, to top off our coolant, let it burp any air bubbles that may have gotten pulled in. Uh, and then we should be good. The last thing we need to do is still kind of work on that steering because we still have the creek. I think I have a plan for how I'll fix it though. So we'll get into that once we have everything burped. So one thing we're gonna to try to get rid of that creaking in the steering is actually updating or upgrading our steering uh, idle arm. So what we currently have on the car is a stamped piece, which comes in the later model, model Super Beetles. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, and this is actually an upgrade you could buy as a, as a uh, set. And I realized this is what the bushing I bought, this bronze anti-shim bushing is for. So we're gonna take this apart and essentially make our own uh, heavy duty or uh, anti-shimmy uh, idle arm setup. So I'm gonna take this apart, clean it all up, press the new bushing in, install this, and hopefully that gets rid of any of the creaking. This is a lot more rigid than what I have on there, so I'm hoping that's gonna alleviate any of the problems right away. All right, so there's actually some key differences here between the two, uh, between the two setups. I'm kinda glad, even if this isn't the problem, I'm doing the upgrade here. Uh, so what you can see is the stamped piece here. And uh, so it has a straight bolt with no special features to it. But what's cool about the other version, uh, so first of all, you can see just the overall thickness difference between these. Uh, these are, you know, this is a thick boy uh, compared to the stamped piece. But also what's pretty cool about this versus the, uh, the uh, I guess this is a machine piece or maybe a cast piece versus the stamps, is it also incorporates the spline here on both the uh, arm and the shaft, which the other one doesn't have. So that uh, firmly locks these together. It's just a better thing altogether. And what's nice about this is to push the bushings in and out, you have flat surfaces. On the stamp piece, it's all curved and crap like that. You see, this is all curvy. So it's really hard to uh, press the bushings in and out. On this guy, uh, everything's nice and flat, so it'll be nice and easy to press those in and out. So we'll go ahead and press this out, put the bronze one in, and then we'll just reassemble. Should be pretty straightforward. All right, so we did one of our uh, old school tricks here where we put the bushing in the freezer overnight. So it should be nice and cold and a little bit easier to press into the housing. All right, so we got the coolant burped. Everything should be good to go. We're gonna take it for another spin here. Did a few more tweaks to the tune. And I realized that you can actually put a filter on for when you do your uh, VE Analyze Live. So I'm gonna put on a filter so that it no longer uh, does any tuning in the idle area. <clears throat> Excuse me, in the idle area. So we're just focusing on, on anything outside of idle. Uh, so I'll fire it up, take it for a quick spin, just make sure nothing overheats and just continue to keep tuning on it. So here we go. And we'll just uh, flash it once here to make sure we get the latest settings. I'll start my auto tune. I always want to start graphing and logging. All right, here we go.
So we went to Lowe's here. Everything went super smooth. I figured Lowe's was a good spot because it's really close to my house. Take a stop, restart it. Everything's going awesome. So we're going to go ahead uh, and just head home. Maybe catch a couple of pulls on the way back. Cautiously, of course. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, so that's all we have for today's video. I forgot to mention it, but we did get that uh, bronze bushing in. Everything sounds really good. Uh, no more creaking. The, the steering is really locked in. Uh, you can really feel all the feedback in the road, which is what I was looking for. So that's great. There's no slop in the steering anymore. Uh, and now in our next video, what we have coming up is we're going to get back into our Triumph. We have all the parts here we need to put this little motor back together and hopefully you can get that bike fired up. So if you like what you saw, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and hope to see you again soon.